Well, hello everybody and welcome back. It's another atypically windy sort of weekend here in Westman, but I thought we would take a wander around the yard and gardens, see how things are doing. I'm gonna give you a quick update on this. I checked it before I got the camera out. We've got no roots going yet. So that's been a month since I started the air layering stuff. We're just gonna check back on it in another couple weeks and uh, yeah, again, just see how it's doing. Um, as always, I'm really hoping that this fuzzy little mic thing is doing its job and blocking this wind because it is absolutely crazy today. But yeah, let's get started around the garden and uh, hopefully have ourselves a quick little visit. So we'll start in an unusual corner of the garden today. This particular planter has spent the last couple of years hanging out inside the chicken coop. This year I figured I'd bring it out and I'd try some, uh, you know, very individual plantings of things. We have a pea that has finally popped up in the corner here. I think it's been about three weeks since I put that in there. That lonely little stalk has got to be a corn plant and that looks like a bean. So I think we're just kind of waiting on a squash of some kind in this corner and possibly some parsley that I may have thrown in five different locations in the middle. We'll just, we'll see what comes of it. But I am really excited to see that we've got a pea, at least one pea growing on the property, a bean, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a corn. So let's look at some of the more substantial beds like that swale over there. Now this garden had worlds of potential this year, but I think I may have buggered that a little bit with all of this stuff that I put on there to top it up. I see none of my intentionals growing in here. And really, like I said early in the season, that's fine. I really don't mind if I just spend the next couple years bulking this up, and building it up, and in the future, it'll grow for me. So there are no real fails in my garden world, um, even though it kind of seems like based on a lot of the stuff that I do that, well, there would be a lot of fails, but it's all about educating myself and maybe a few others along the way. So yeah, the swale, appears to be a fail, but over in that potato garden, I am absolutely blown away by how well this potato garden is doing. I really, you know, it's, this is one of those things that I try things that kind of shouldn't work, but maybe might. And most people, let's be honest, most of the comments in the video where I put this bed together suggested that this was not gonna work. And for a lot of really sound reasons. And yet, I see a lot of potatoes growing in here. There are, of course, some wheat grasses growing, but um, this wasn't exactly decomposed, was it? So with that in mind, I do think there may be a couple of corn coming up here. I saw four places earlier that looked like they might be corn, but I've also seen places that have been eaten down. Like we've got some beans here, kind of ravaged by some insect along the way. But look at all of these things. We've got some more beans coming up in the middle there, which means there should be a corn kind of in here, but I don't see it at the moment. And over by this potato, I believe that's a corn coming up in there. So. That is interesting, it's pink popcorn. We may or may not get anything out of it just because of the age of the seed. Not terribly worried, but quite interested. If I get the potatoes and the beans, that's already a win. We can see coming out the front here, some of those potatoes that I just stuffed in the side to use up the last of the bag. So that is excellent. This is an idea I am definitely gonna carry forward in the future. And when I need to build a large garden bed area, I think I'll just start with throwing out some straw, growing some potatoes in it for the first year and see how it goes from there. You know, just to the left of that, we have the corn row and mullet garden. So it's a barbershop garden, I guess. We've got two very widely spaced, oh, that wind, very widely spaced rows of corn growing here. And there's not a lot popping up in this first one, but over in the second one, again, when I was out checking earlier, I'll shoot you down. Hopefully you can see that one there. About a foot away, we've got another one here. Got another one here, another one there. So the one foot spacing of my silly little stick that I measured out marks on um, seems to have worked in that aspect. You know, last year I had corn planted practically on top of each other and that really didn't work. So, so far so good with that. I know there are a lot of concerns about my corn this year, but remember, it's an experimental garden. Here in the middle mound, or I should say the, the back mound in the middle of the two corn rows, 
These would be sugar pie pumpkins coming up and it looks like there are quite a few of them there. So we'll let natural selection run its course and then I'll probably select a few out of that. In the middle mound between the two rows, we've got beans coming up in at least four different places, which is fantastic. I think I stuffed a whole packet of beans into there. Um, <clears throat> a little bit on the overkill side, but I honestly wasn't expecting a whole lot to spread of it. So they've got a fair bit of space between them and the mounds beside them and between them and the two rows of corn. I think I might just let that go hog wild and see what comes of it. And then we've got the front mound in the middle here. These would be seeds saved from a grocery store spaghetti squash several years ago. And I am quite pleased as my shadow comes in and covers it up a bit to see just how many of them are sprouting in there. So that is really kind of exciting. This garden got started really late. So I'll be surprised if anything comes of it at all. But the fact that those things are doing this well pleases me. Okay, moving again just to the left of that, we've got the tomato and thistle bed. Now, interestingly enough, I was recently reading that tomatoes grown in the vicinity of thistles have better um, storage abilities, we'll say. So I'm not going to pull all of these thistles out, but I am going to continually pull larger ones out over the course of the season. I started off with 42 plants in here and with the assistance of a few birds and bugs we have lost a few here's an empty spot right there for example but I am planning on just kind of moving up some of those perennial onions and a few other things that uh, well might go well in a long-term tomato bed it's really hard to see these things right now hopefully you can kind of see what's growing on there towering thistle beside it but yes so this will look better of course as time goes on and the tomato plants get a little bit larger some of these uh, neighboring gardens are covering up their more delicate plants at night but I am taking the Darwin approach it is totally survival of the fittest this year Rawr. the bunker garden has become this weird sort of grazing experiment look this has already gone to seed that's pretty amazing. But the height of the grass on here, I'm really just quite curious. I'm gonna come by with some yard shears, completely trim it down like it's been totally overgrazed and uh, see how long it takes to grow back up, whether or not we can get two flushes of growth like this out of it in a single season or what. Because yeah, as I probably just said, I have some very interesting ideas on how this could relate to future livestock management. That, yeah, they're, they're weird, but whatever. The Chaos Garden, look at this. So much chicken food sitting there for free. I love free feed. That's about the only way you make money with animals is uh, if the feed is free. So, in amongst the Chaos Garden, though, we have yet another tomato that I planted in there. This one is doing surprisingly well. Kind of impressed. I don't know if it's because of the shade is blocking it throughout the heat of the day or what's going on there, but it does seem to be surviving and kind of thriving. And then we've got the pineberry patch here. So many runners off of these plants. It is so very exciting. And I'm not going to be cutting them off anytime soon, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of, and you can see over here, is I'm trying to direct trying to direct the runners along the ground so they can still throw out roots to where I actually want the plants to grow so that when I snip them, that's they're already good to go. They're rooted and I'll have even more berries coming out in the future. But I mean, as we can tell, I clearly need to grab some chicken food from around here, free up some space around the berries for them to do just that. But you gotta love the permaculture, right? It just keeps on producing. Now this wind is not helping, but uh, I can let you know that I did see some tiny berries starting to form at the bottom of the larger plant here. So hopefully next week I'll be able to show you something fun and tasty growing on there. Would be very nice, would be very nice indeed. And then this so far is just one lonely little tomato growing in amongst all that carbon and it does not look happy at all. Not happy at all. I'm not sure it's getting a lot of uh, moisture penetration. We haven't had a whole lot of rain lately. So hopefully if the weather 
you know, brings us some precipitation and soaks this in. That little tomato will do better, but again, it's one of those things that I'm just really not expecting much from. These things happen. It's it's an experimental garden. And this here is called a carragana bush. I don't know if I've shown you all this before or not, but these little yellow flowers will eventually turn into um, basically pea pods. Just cover the place and they snap and these little things grow absolutely everywhere. Like, just wild, right? But these little flowers apparently are quite edible. And I have found myself kind of nibbling on them since I found that out. It is an interesting sort of flavor. They're better, I think, when they're still closed up, but it's, it's good, it's interesting. And it's a kind of a free food source because for the first few years we lived here, we looked at that as just kind of a pest plant. It's very hard to kill, apparently. Somebody down the street was trying to uh, pour diesel all over the roots of theirs to get rid of it. And, you know, if you cut it down, it just shoots right back up. One of these days, I'll show you the main caragana bush that we've got growing here, but it's just wild. Anyway, uh, hopefully the wind has behaved itself with this microphone. I'm going to head inside, edit this up so I can share it with you. And I hope you guys are having some much better weather wherever your garden is growing this year. Much love, everybody, and I will see you next time.